Hey friends, awesome video for you today. You see we got some equipment. I am with the Doug Gray. You've probably seen him on the channel before. Our resident expert on all things custom reel, rods, lures. And in this video, we're gonna talk about how useful big game reels. What goes into it, what you need to know, how you can screw it up, because I'm, I'm probably gonna screw it up at some point. So that's exactly what we're going to talk about right now. Doug so let's talk about it we've got an international 130 reel here there's a bad mama jama we want to spool her up what are the steps you start a little bit so tell us what you've done already and then we're going to take it from that point all yeah. right well what I like to do on any big game reel is I'll put some monofilament line on the spool first so monofilament first and the reason is for that is well one thing is it will help cushion the spool against all the tension that's generated by big, fast-moving fish. Uh -huh. uh, two, it's easy to make a connection to your braided line, which we also call backing. Um, okay, so the braid has a better chance of slipping on the reel if the mono's not there? That's correct. Gotcha. That, okay. That's a problem that many people have. And what happens, the braid will not seat tight enough on the spool so it the whole spool of braid will slip on the spool and people think their drag is bad it's really not their drag it's just the whole spool of line turning on the spool itself that's what a 600 pound tuna does it can do that <laughs> okay all right cool all right so anyway I, i've started putting the the braid on and the reason we use this is is this is 200 pound diamond braid 200 pound diamond braid and it's a hollow core which means that we're able to splice it by putting by using a chinese finger trap method by putting the monofilament inside of it the tighter you pull on it the tighter it locks itself down ah okay, okay the other reason we use this braid and we want 200 pound test is it's much thinner diameter than monofilament which means more. we can get a lot more string on this spool than we would be able to if we use straight mono. So if we're just using straight mono, the chances that we run out of line if a fish makes a mega run is greater than if we're using using this particular braid. That's absolutely right. Ah, okay, cool, good to know. All one right. other one other plus to doing that is we're going to put about 300 yards of monofilament top shot on here. So okay. the top shot. When people say top shot, what does that mean? That's just the, that's the, the last line, that, leg of line? That's the last leg of line. And the reason we want to use monofilament on a big game reel is because mono stretches. Okay? It acts as a shock absorber. And this versus, doesn't really stretch. Versus the braid, which does not stretch. The problem with using straight braid is without that stretch, these fish run so hard and fast, a lot of times you pull hooks, break lines, and things like that because you don't have that shock absorption capability. Gotcha. All right, cool. So let's right. see how this cool machine works. Got the glove out and all. Got the glove out. Protect those fingers. All right, we're gonna get her started here. So that just holds it off. Yep. And I'm gonna use my left hand and the glove to tension that spool a little bit. We want this on as tight as we can get it. And it doesn't matter how tight you think you can put it on there, <laughs> that 600 pound tuna is going to put it on tighter. Go off. Go off. Go off. Go off. <laughs> so we want to start with it as tight as we can get it. Got to be tight, all right? So you're, you're not going that fast here. No. Oh. Is that a mistake that people might make is, is pulling this up too fast? There's really no need to go fast. Oh. Uh, I got nowhere to be. We got plenty of time. We got nothing but time. We got time to kill. <laughs> I just want to make sure it's done right. Yeah. If it's done right the first time, you have less problems in the low run. That's why it's custom. And we're done 
done with that. There's over 700 yards of diamond braid on here. All right, half and a mile. 50 yards of monofilament underneath used to pr protect the spool and yeah. also give us a good connection. Now what we're gonna do is get ready to put our mono top shot on. So we've got to do a splice. A splice, which is not easy. No, it takes a little bit of time. It's not difficult per se, but okay. it takes a little bit of time and there's some steps that need cool. to be taken to get it done properly. Well, I ain't never done it, so I'm ready to see it. Let's do it. So we, had, we had our 200 pound line here, our braid, 200 pound diamond braid, right? Yep. And then we've got a 130 pound top shot. Yep. And it's gonna be how many yards? Uh, it's gonna be a little over 300 yards on top. 300 yards of that on top, okay. Yep. So for, first we're gonna do is we're gonna take our, uh, our splicing needle. And this is a stainless steel hollow needle with a nice soft rounded end on it. I'm gonna insert my 130. Is this needle made specifically for 130 line? Yeah. Uh, uh, yes, it is. They're, okay. They're they're made in all different sizes. This one happens to be made for the 130, and uh, boy, they are proud of them. I bought a set of them a couple years ago, and I think this set was 120 dollars. Holy smokes! For five needles. Huh. That's a solid <laughs> business model. <laughs> All right, so we, 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 on one end we've got the mono. So the mono is inserted into the needle. Okay. The other end of the needle, I say, is smooth. So we're going to insert that into our hollow core braid, just like oh, that. Oh, get it, get up on this, Vita. Insert that into the end of your braid, and then we're just going to push it up on there. And this connection is is a hollow core splice, and when it comes tight. It acts like a Chinese finger trap. The harder you pull on it, the tighter that line will will cinch down on the monofilament inside and it won't come apart. So we're gonna do this. You see how long that took me to go about six inches? Yeah. We're gonna go about 12 feet. 12 feet, wow, okay. All right, we're gonna go 12 feet. Looks like time lapse is in our future. spot in the braid but it's it's really tight and I can't get past it. Let's cut it and start over. You're gonna have to start the whole thing on? Yeah. Wow. Just because there's a bad spot in the braid. I couldn't get past it. So you just have occasionally you have um just a bad weave. I mean this doesn't affect the strength of the braid uh but you can't can't get past it. foot splice which is bringing our braid together with our mono which was that top shot that you were talking about why does it have to be 12 feet uh the the longer it is the more the less likelihood of it, you're going to have of it coming out no uh, slippage no slippage gotcha so we're almost done i'm gonna i'm gonna bring this up just a little bit more okay and then we're gonna come right on out of the side and remember, I got my mono inside that needle, so I'm gonna pull that right on out. The needle comes out. The mono is in there. Now what we're gonna do is get ready to spool this back up. So I'm gonna run that to almost there, and then we're gonna whip that on there. So I'm gonna swap these spools out real quick. Okay. Get my mono on there, ready to go. There's my homemade tensioning device. I like it, Doug. I like it. Back to our, what is it, 130 pound? 130, 130 pound Momoy diamond line. Good stuff. All right, I'm gonna get this on here. All right. 
right? Got it right there. Now I'm gonna take some. So this is the this is the this is, start of our splice. Right? This is the start of where that monofilament. That this is the end of the monofilament right here. So what I'm gonna do now is I'm gonna take some of this wax thread, just a uh, wax floss. We use that for all kinds of applications and uh, offshore fishing, whether you're stitching up a bait. Uh, to get ready to for a pitch bait for marlin or whipping the end of a line and I'm gonna put a couple overhand or half hitches right up against well we're gonna this is gonna get cinched down here and it's gonna help keep that mono from sliding in place right there and help also give us a good smooth transition through your guides, through your rollers and whatnot. Okay. We like to take all the steps to try to make sure nothing slips. Big game fish will exploit any weakness in your tackle. No weaknesses. No weaknesses. No mercy. What was this stuff called again? This is wax floss. Wax floss. Yep, it's got a, you feel it, it's, it's just waxed, and what it does is it slides really and good. It, and it's exact and same really, size and feel of floss, you're right. Really tightens down good. Some people use them to tie their lures, their sea witches and things. Some uh -huh. people use floss. Oh, uh, floss it, floss it good. Couple more wraps here, trim this off. Now, I'm gonna, as I, as I run this line on this spool, I'm gonna push this braid down to make sure it's tight. Oh wow, so you're still making sure you got all the tension. Yep, try to push this down and get it tight on that mono. Cause the tighter it starts on that mono, the less chance you're ever gonna have a slippage. There it goes. All right, now we're gonna stop there. So now we've got that braid pushed down as far as it's gonna go on that mono. Okay. And we're gonna do the same thing here on this end. We're gonna, we're gonna floss this end as well. Then, once that's done, we can spool up the mono, bolt the reel onto our custom fishing weapon, and go fishing. And we can go fishing. So just to review, what we've done here is we started with our 130 class reel. We put on about 50 yards of mono top shot. Oh, mono. I mean, not, not mono top shot. Yeah. Just a mono. Just mono, so, just a cushion. So, so as a cushion so it doesn't slip. Then we've got our braid, our 200 pound diamond, what was it? Diamond braid. 200 pound diamond braid. We did about 7,000 yards of that. Was that right? No, 700. 700 yards. Se yeah. This is why we do reviews. Well, math is hard. <laughs> we had 700 yards of that, okay? And after that, then we did our top shot. But in order to do the top shot of mono, we had to do that 12 feet 12 of foot splice. Splice. That's right. A splice, which we saw how it was done. That was really, really cool. And we've learned how to floss each end of the splice itself. And so now we've got a full setup, offshore, custom setup, ready for big game, brought to you by Doug Gray of Killer Bee Customs. As always, my friends, stay salty.